what Locke says is that if you look at Christianity and you ask yourself the question, what is the true Christianity, then what you get is not the answer that a naive person would expect. This or that scripture is sacred. This or that belief must be held. What you get is that the true Christianity is an attitude of humility to the question of what true, humil- true Christianity is. So uh, inside Christianity, uh, what you get as the most basic opinion is that you shouldn't be too sure about the truth of Christianity. Uh, and that argument is significant because in the modern centuries we will extend this uh, pattern, this this way of thinking to all of our most important beliefs about justice and patriotism and religion uh, and any truth provided that it's big enough. If it's bigger than what is X in this mathematical problem, then we extend this pattern that Locke uh, explains here. So that gives us a reason to pay careful attention, even if we see that he's got a narrow uh, narrow context that may not apply to, uh, to you listening. So what is it? Toleration is the true Christian opinion. What is toleration? Uh, letting other people have their own opinions and being not too sure about what's on one's own. So... Here he acknowledges the the normal, the straightforward, the older way of thinking. Uh, some people will say the truth of Christianity is uh, obvious because uh, the oldest is the truest. Uh, some people will say that uh, the the show, the the character of the truth, is displayed in what the members do. Uh, some people uh, boast, as he says, they, they talk up, uh, they, they show for others the reformation of discipline. Either they, they act well or they've been very careful about what they take truth. Uh, every, some people say uh, that it's orthodoxy, you know, being being in the truth, having the right answer. In fact, everyone makes that answer. So uh, it's common for people to make the traditional claims, uh, my religion is true. Uh, Locke calls those boasts rather than crediting them uh, as accurate in, in at least some cases, maybe only one case, there would seem to be only one truth to any one question, as Descartes says. Uh, but uh, it would be ordinary to suppose that somebody has that truth. But here Locke introduces the uncertainty that all of us live with uh, in the most important things. Everyone is orthodox to himself. So the the claims of truth uh, are the biggest and most important, and from a a better perspective, they don't matter at all because they're automatic. Uh, We all think that we know the truth and that other people are wrong. And if everybody thinks that, uh, then the claim uh, that one knows the truth uh, has no importance at all. And why would it be wrong to make that old-fashioned, that simple and straightforward and maybe naive claim, uh, my religion is the truth for X, Y, or Z reason? Uh, Because that shows somebody striving for power and domination. What you you want uh, is to be first, to be on top. The truth is a kind of weapon that you use uh, to found your superiority. Uh, And this you may recognize as the common uh, modern attitude, that uh, to have the truth gives you a certain authority, uh, and therefore one should 
work hard, one should strive to have the truth. That would be an old-fashioned attitude. The modern attitude turns things upside down. To claim to have the truth is a bid for authority, an attempt to get yourself authority, and we should all be suspicious of that uh, because each one of us is owed our individual liberty, which includes our right to find the truth for ourselves. So, and, and it will be good for you to recognize that those are just opposite answers. And that to try to face which of those two opposite answers is the best. Is, is it simply correct to, uh, to accept that, there, that questions have answers? And that seeking the truth is always the appropriate thing to do when you meet doubt. Yeah, is that the right way? Or should you rather accept that uh, societies can never settle on truths? And that trying too hard to make a unified truth causes more problems than doubt ever will. Uh, and therefore you're single best answer to any question, provided it matters, provided it's important, should be. Uh, nobody knows, and I don't know either. Uh, so going back to, to Locke's argument, uh, trying to get power and authority is not a Christian thing to do. Uh, and if... The truth is a weapon that you can use to give yourself uh, authority. Uh, then trying to get the truth is not a Christian thing to do. Uh, at least it wouldn't be a Christian thing to try to get your truth established as the official opinion of your society. Uh, even if somebody has the truth, and of course we've done Nothing to eliminate that possibility, and we never could. Even so, uh, the true Christian attitude uh, is charity, uh, meekness being a, a small and mild person, uh, and goodwill, um, caring about the, the good of others. Um, and this should be toward everybody. Uh, toleration is, just, is not something simply shared among Christians. Uh, but should go to all human beings. And that would be the Christian attitude. Uh, that if you don't have this humble attitude, then you're not behaving the way Jesus did. Uh, you're not behaving the way that Christ did, and therefore you're, you're falling short of being a Christian. That is Locke's argument. And he's got good grounds uh, given the character of Christianity that this uh, humble attitudes, uh, charity and mildness uh, are certainly well established uh, within scripture, uh, the teachings of Jesus. Uh, they are fundamental to the religion. Locke is not wrong for that. Here I, I brought up uh, passages from what's commonly called the Sermon on the Mount, uh, a famous discussion of Christian principles uh, that yeah, that comes up in the in the New Testament of the Christian Bible uh, and and has become proverbial. I mean, these are these are things that just uh, everybody in Christian society uh, talks about, whether they're thinking about religion or Christianity or not. So, uh, so what does Jesus say? I mean, just review these, uh, and the point again is to back up Locke that. If he says Christianity means being humble, uh, he's not just making that up, but uh, he has good grounds. Um, so, so Jesus says, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Right? That's the traditional law, and it's a stern law. Uh, it, it's, it's a proud law uh, that you pay back an injury for an injury. But what is the Christian attitude? Do not resist one who is evil. So that's the humility. Don't fight back against evil. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him and the other also. So this has become a proverbial phrase that you may hear among English-speaking people. Turn the other cheek. 
Oh, that is religious advice. That the proper response to suffering violence is not to do violence in turn, uh, but uh, to be mild and humble and to accept uh, the punishment that comes. Because the world is a rough place and other people are more powerful than you. And your strength is to uh, accept this and to rely on God uh, rather than to reject it and rely on your own strength for fighting. So other examples in the same way. I said, someone takes you to a court of law uh, and wants your shirt, then you give him your coat also. Uh, and if, uh, as happened in the Roman period when Jesus was alive, the Romans had conquered the Jewish people. The Romans were on top and the Roman soldiers uh, could s just stop random passive eye and, and make them carry their things uh, uh, for, to go a certain distance, uh, call it a mile. Uh, this was the law of a Roman soldier was walking along carrying whatever he needed to carry. Uh, uh, he could just force help from whoever he happened uh, to come by, uh, but only for a limited distance. Uh, there was... Um, uh, the Romans couldn't be completely oppressive and enslave everyone. Uh, and uh, Jesus says, you know, uh, not what one might expect. We should fight back against this tyranny that they can force us into free labor. Those Romans can force we Jews into free labor uh, because they have the military power and we should fight against this. Uh, what he says instead is, uh, if they ask you for the, for the limit, uh, do this work for me for, for one mile, about a kilometer and a half. Uh, then, uh, then your response should be to give to. Uh, so uh, Locke is on good grounds to say that humility is the true uh, Christian attitude. Uh, and he makes that his basic defense of toleration. Uh, while... For you personally, it is of supreme importance that you try to find the truth of Christianity. You try to know the best way to live a good life and get you into heaven. That's the essence of religion, as Locke will say. But your attitude to that as a public truth, as something that the government can maintain and enforce on others, uh, should not be to support that truth. And if it's the best for you to want it given to others because it's a good thing, that's not the Christian attitude. The Christian attitude is to care very much to get to the truth for yourself, uh, but to be humble with regard to other opinions, to let other people do it their own way and not to, to interfere.